Hey, it's me. Yeah, Joanna Stern. I, you didn't recognize me? You know, like my, my new look? But really, that, that's me. Well, this is me. This is real life me, and that's avatar virtual reality me. But actually, I'm getting a little tired from working from home in the same space, so I'm gonna go back in here. I think I'll also go here. And here. Yes, the office. Sure, when COVID-19 first hit and we all went into lockdown, video calling brought us together. It was even fun. But now the Zoom fatigue is real. I rarely even look at my colleagues anymore. So I've turned to virtual reality. And as it turns out, an increasing number of Fortune 500 companies are embracing this technology too. It makes sense, as companies have extended work from home policies until late 2021, or even indefinitely, they're looking at ways to bring individuals and teams together. Plus, even before the pandemic, virtual reality used within businesses was forecasted to grow from 829 million in 2018 to 4.26 billion in 2023. So a few months ago, when it became apparent we weren't going back to the office anytime soon, I started trying it out for myself. I had a lot of questions. Can virtual interaction really mimic the real world? What do you need to make it all work? Can you really be productive in there? Will I feel like I need to barf all the time? Oh boy. To test it all out, I worked with a startup out of New York City called Spatial to recreate one of my favorite places in the office. Yes, the elevator. Dance, okay, it's like dance, this. dance. Don't you really want to turn around and face backwards? Yes. I spend a lot of time in the elevator in the office. I have a whole video interview series in there. It is an elevator. Yeah. Okay, fine, spoiler. It's not a real elevator. It's a three-wall set. Working. Are you Sebastian Thrun? Are you Vigia from Twitter? Are you... Wait, what are you? I'm a holographic avatar of Anand Agrawala, the CEO of Spatial. Well... Nice to meet you. I, can we shake hands? Yeah. Wow. Wow, look at that. We don't even need six feet. We can even high five. Wow. So where are we? Facial is basically a holographic collaboration platform. Imagine if Zoom had teleportation. So you just put on a headset and with a realistic avatar generated from a simple 2D photo, you can feel like you're in the same room with someone. Whew. It's actually kind of crazy how real it feels in there. I mean, he does not look like him uh, as like a real person, but his presence feels very real. But of course, Anand is in his office in New York City, and I'm in my childhood basement in New Jersey. My producer, also in a headset, in his home in Brooklyn. Connecting in Spatial was really quite easy, and anyone can do it. I signed up for a spatial account on the company's website and uploaded a photo of myself. Using some machine learning, it turned that into my avatar. Then I downloaded the spatial app on this new $299 Oculus Quest 2. It works on the older one too. It also works on a Microsoft HoloLens augmented reality headset. Oh, which, you know, just cost $3,500. All right, let's do it. You don't need any extra hardware with those headsets. All the head and hand tracking just works. When I move my head, so does my avatars. When I move my hands, so does my avatars. Then you can join one of the spaces Spatial makes. The company made this custom elevator for me, but the preset Spatial meeting rooms are being used by all sorts of companies. Do you have a sense of who's using Spatial? What types of companies? Anywhere from you know 40% of the Fortune 1000 to just regular small teams and people trying to stay connected. So some of the customers uh, are like Pfizer, uh, Mattel, a manufacturing company, also companies in fashion, um, you know, government agencies, intelligence agencies. What about the spaces themselves? Are people customizing them to look like their real office spaces? Yeah, so that's been a huge feature request. We've added a couple more environments like a boardroom and, and even an abstract one where you can overlay your own, but we are gonna add support for that. Within the spaces you can talk, but you can also use 3D tools to brainstorm and look at presentations or even manipulate objects like 3D dogs. You can virtually pet them. Browser? Where are you? Browser. You're gonna get a 3D avatar. I have a real dog that's much cuter than all of these right now. For real though, the chief technology officer at Mattel told me employees use Spatial to meet up and review 3D models of toys and store displays. Of course, Spatial isn't perfect and certainly misses a lot of things about a true person-to-person -person office conversation or elevator ride. For instance, facial cues and even body language. 
Like when I asked, you've built something pretty cool here. Has any big company tried to come and buy Spatial? You know, I mean, it depends. You know, what what is what is buy? You know, what is what is it? I've asked that question a lot of times in this elevator, and I can usually read the facial expressions, but I, I I'm having a hard time reading right now. Right? I'm blushing in real life and sweating and squirming, but you know, I just seem like cool, calm, and collected. Then the tech can sometimes get in the way. <laughs> buy me a drink first, Joanna. Come on. Plus, you'll really want to buy a headset. Spatial does have a web app, and its coming iPhone and Android apps let you join in augmented reality. That is where digital objects are overlaid in your real world. But VR is far more immersive. Spatial isn't the only virtual meeting platform. Another option, Mozilla Hubs, has conference room-like spaces, though the avatars look pretty cartoonish. Altspace VR, owned by Microsoft, is used by companies like Accenture to hold all-hands meetings. Facebook, which owns Oculus, has recently launched its own social virtual reality space called Horizon, though it's focused on more playful interactions. One day, and I really hope one day soon, we'll go back to a real office. Spatial, which was originally designed to bring colleagues together from various different offices, isn't worried about that, though. Do you ever think spatial and VR meetings will be as ubiquitous as, as video calling? A hundred percent. I mean, it's not a question of if, it's more a question of when. Um, you know, there's a near future where your next phone or computer is going to be glasses. And in that future, your FaceTime becomes 3D. And, you know, when you're FaceTiming your mom, she can actually be on your couch with you. That seems a ways off. For now, though, connecting with colleagues this way really is worth a try. Hi. It isn't real life, How but it you? brings back some of the serendipity of the office. <laughs> and goes deeper than just another impersonal 2D video call. And I promise, you can totally get real work done in there. Oh no, I don't have legs. I don't have a butter legs.